This is the Spyderco Air. Very nice little knife. CPM M4 blade. Full specifications are down below. This was the knife that Gav did some modifications on. Some anodizing. Reground the edge. Forced the patina on the blade. This week's challenge is a bit different. Your friend drops off this blade to you. He's very intrigued about the steel. So he's done a bit of research. It's a high speed steel. It's basically, say, M2 with a modification to increase the vanadium and carbon content which dramatically increases the wear resistance and obtainable hardness. Because it's a high speed steel, the carbide aggregate is going to be smaller than in the high carbide stainless steels like ATS 34 VG10 because the high speed steels generally contain MC type carbides rather than the large chromium type carbides found in stainless steels. So your friend knows that this should keep a level of high sharpness better than some of the stainless steels he's using. He doesn't know, however, if his level of sharpening ability is actually high enough to show the true advantage of this knife. So he came over to you and you agreed to do a little comparison. All you have is this knife A roll of 3.8 sisal rope and a cheap, coarse, fine bench tone. And you had to devise an experiment to quantify the difference in edge retention when you sharpen it versus when your friend sharpen it. So your friend can check and see does he need to spend a little bit more time learning how to sharpen to bring out the true performance of the knife. So the challenge is to describe the experiment that you think will give the best indication of performance in the restriction of one YouTube comment box. The challenge will be open for approximately one day, and I mean like one day, not 24 hours, from morning to night. And at the end, I will pick essentially the one which has the best description of an experiment to produce the results this required. Now to raise the ante a little bit, I'm gonna make this more like how actual research and work is done in real life. Which means that you can win not only by giving a very good description of what you think is a very good way to conduct the experiment, but you can prevent someone from winning if you respond to their description of an experiment and point out a significant flaw in their methodology that yours doesn't have. Now, you completely lose any time there's a personal comment made. The reason that this is critical is because in real life, when you put forward a hypothesis, when you put forward a set of data, when you describe a methodology, and someone makes a criticism of it, you cannot refute their criticism by insulting the person. It doesn't work that way. You actually have to respond to it and either show that their criticism is not valid and that your original assertion of methodologies remain, or you change the way you're doing things. That's the way science actually works. So again, 
very simple challenge for this week. Now, as an aside, a few comments about this knife. Some things that I really like that are not overly common features. You can see the way the blade is dropped very, very slightly. Very slightly. What this does is it prevents the need to have a sharpening notch or choil, but a very similar axe-like one in that you get smooth sharpening right back to the start of the edge for quite some time and you don't get that blunt spot or little recurve that can develop in edges that go all the way back but don't have a sharpening notch or choil. Very thin blade stock, high flat grind, high speed steel, not much to complain about there. One interesting thing was that reports of the initial edge thickness put it at around 20 thou or so. Now, for a lot of knife companies and a lot of knife makers, that's considered extreme performance for a cutting geometry. But as this was made by Spyderco and considering this was sort of a gentleman's folder, most people sort of expected it to be a little less. Somewhere around 10 thousandths I think would have impressed an awful lot of people. But of course, whenever you're doing something like that from a manufacturer maker point of view, you're always balancing uh, concerns about warranty returns uh, and replacements. A lot of little features that stand out in this knife that you might not see right away when you look at it. The little hump right here fits very well uh, in terms of your index finger for controlling the blade for very fine, uh, very precise cuts uh, with the tip. A couple of things uh, that stand out to me as a bit odd, and some of them are personal preferences. I don't get the dual access for the liners. Uh, it just seems to me to be less than elegant and a bit clunky. A lanyard hole and a milled out position for a clip would have been nice options. I think the way Reeve does uh, clip options are one of the more elegant solutions in which basically there are holes mounted or tapped for clips but if you don't want them he just sells a little cover plate that goes over it. That way everyone is pleased. The liners are proud and actually quite sharp. Some people like proud liners. They go around the outside of the handle, they frame it in and especially with the anodizing done really stands out. I generally don't like them. Not from a look point of view, but just they're just kind of abrasive. And the spine is also kind of sharp, but these are nitpicky uh, small things. The lock is surprisingly stiff. Arguable whether or not you need such a lock on this folder. But I actually expected it to be easier to operate. Not a huge drawback, but again, as more of a gentleman's type knife, I would have preferred a much slimmer uh, lock. I don't think you need the strength of this thickness of lock bar in this folder. But again, from a maker, manufacturer uh, point of view, you have to look at concerns and also that people would think or judge it to be cheap if they were actually much thinner. I do look forward to looking at the steel uh, M4. I have a couple of other blades coming in it, also a Benchmade uh, 710 Axis. That's quite some time in me actually getting one, but it will be interesting to see if there's a significant difference between this knife and the Benchmade version of M4 and how it compares to some of the other high wear steels in both early and late sharpness. But overall, beautiful little knife very nice modifications uh, done by Mike and the only thing that I will change is that I'm going to take this grind all the way down to the edge what Mike did was he sort of blended the edge back into the primary grind uh, so he sort of added a transition bevel I like transition bevels I use them a lot on larger knives but on smaller knives they're not really as uh, necessary because you don't need the toughness that they bring to the table 
because they allow you to sort of maximize the cutting ability, uh, toughness combination. But when your knife is this small, the level of durability required generally is not excessive. So you can generally grind right to the edge. So I'll bring this one down almost to zero and just back sharpen it a little bit. Of course, I'll lose the finish on the surface, but that'll come back over time anyway. So there's a challenge, and there's this very nice little knife. And uh, one last comment. It's very refreshing to see, and I've been championing it for a long time, Spyderco is now releasing uh, videos from the designers uh, of the knives talking about why they did what they did when they make them. And it's a wonderful little piece, and I wish more makers and manufacturers would do that to give you insight into the blades.